Hello everybody, today's thought experiment is that uh, we're going to connect Jupyter Notebook to Salesforce. Uh, the purpose is to understand if we can use Python's fast data science and machine learning libraries to analyze the data within Salesforce. Uh, Salesforce recently has re uh, released a lot of tools like Einstein and so forth, uh, which allows for mining of the work's data and then provides recommendations and so forth. Uh, but then we want a little bit more control and granularity, so we're going to be using uh, Python instead. The tools I'll be using during this session is going to be uh, Python and then um, a library called Simple Salesforce. Basically, this is just a library that connects to Salesforce through its REST APIs. Uh, of course, uh, Jupyter Notebook and then uh, salesforce.com. For the steps, really, would be just connect to Salesforce, put down data, and then we can use uh, pandas and uh, NumPy in order to apply data analysis. So let's see how we can do this. First thing is uh, we're gonna take a look at the Salesforce org. Uh, this org doesn't have um, person accounts enabled, so it's just accounts and contacts. So what I've done in terms of preparing the uh, data set is uh, I've just created a bunch of, um, actually these contacts already existed before. I've just uh, randomly applied a bunch of ages, starting from age 20. And then uh, here's kind of the uh, notebook. So for those of you who are not familiar with uh, Jupyter, um, the reason why I like it is that in addition to just running Python scripts, what it allows you to do is capture the result and as well as annotate um, how, what uh, you plan to do. In which case, it makes it very easy easy to learn. Um, and then as you can see, you can also plot everything in line. And then once you have saved this file, um, you don't have to connect it and you can just retrieve this file. So it's almost like a history of the data science experiments that you did. So first thing we need to do is uh, connect to um, the, the, the Salesforce and then import the various libraries. So here you can use NumPy, Pandas, we could use Collection as well, Request is really for the REST API, and we use Matplotlib. Okay, so in this case, we can open the connection to Salesforce. Uh, the way uh, this is done, I've just co co copied this code off the web, is that uh, there is another file sitting within file system that has the username and password, in which case then you don't need to put a hard code username and password in here. There are many other ways of doing it, for example, getting an um, OAuth token as, as well. But in this case, uh, this is how we're gonna be doing it for this one. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm redisplay the username, just to make sure that I'm not running this against the wrong org. So what happens uh, after you get it back from Salesforce is uh, you actually get a, uh, a dictionary. So maybe what we can do is uh, we can demonstrate this um, later on and then uh, let's just walk through the rest of the scripts first and then before we kind of run frame by frame um, we have the data frame we co that's constructed uh, the age and so forth you know we grab uh, the, one of the columns with the age and then we display histogram okay so let's run this one at a time so first thing here is run this okay so this is done now you open up a connection so I'm just using the keyboard shortcut, which is control return on the Mac. Uh, likewise, you can actually uh, go up here and press this button here. Okay, so it displays the uh, username. So we want to get the uh, IDs from the contact. So it's first name, last name, age. So run this here. And I think we want to do one more thing, which is going to change this uh, particular cell to also redisplay the contact dictionary. So let's run this. Okay, so what happens is that uh, Salesforce, at least the simple Salesforce library, returns an ordered dictionary in uh, Python. So it's got some metadata about the size of the, uh, the data set as well, but then it's not really rows and columns that you can use. So you can actually see here is uh, you need to navigate and traverse down this tree to the records um, element, and, and then this is where you get your data set. And then afterwards, for the records element, you also uh, will have these uh, ordered dictionary sets, right? So you definitely don't want as part of your uh, kind of a data frame, you know, total size, done, true, so forth. You kind of want to start here. And that's why we want to call contact dictionary uh, at records, which contains uh, only this section here, okay? And at that point, uh, the data frame, uh, li uh, the pandas library actually provides an easier way of doing it. It just basically, you pass in your contact dictionary um, into the data frame as the uh, constructor. Uh, it used to be much harder, but now it looks like uh, somebody's kind of figured this all out. So we've got to kind of display um, what we've actually retrieved. Just display the first 10 records using the head command. So let me, let's try to play this again. Okay, so we have this here. Next thing to do is all we care about is really is uh, this column here. So we apply this operation. So an age column, and then uh, again, take a look at what the first 10 um, records look like. 
Okay, in this case, uh, we did actually up ahead um, before, say, to plot, plot in, in line, and in which case, let's just display a histogram. Uh, can do a bins of 20. Okay. So let's uh, play this here. Okay, so you can see this data uh, set's a little bit funny. I mean, there's nobody age, I suppose, um, you know, around like 23, 24. Uh, likewise, you don't want it so granular, you can do this. Right, so uh, bucket size of a 10, um, slots wide. And once this cuff in um, Jupyter and uh, within data frames, there's so much you can do using the uh, pandas and uh, NumPy libraries. Okay, so this is what you have here. So let's um, kind of see how this all connects in real time. So let's uh, go here, go to uh, develop console. So what I've done is actually try to randomize the uh, data set. So I can run this uh, anonymous um, Apex code different. So basically I go through the org's list of contacts and then I do a random number and then add uh, 20 in front of it. So it starts at 20 and uh, generates ages above. Um, math the random creates a number between zero and one. So uh, when applied to by 50, it means pretty much uh, zero and zero to 50. So you have a min of 20 and then a max of uh, 70. Uh, so the age variable is what's going to store into and then we uh, list uh, the, uh, the contacts. So what I'm going to do is we run this again. That means that we uh, randomize the ages again. And we see within the uh, Python Jupyter Notebook, uh, the histograms is going to change. So back to this notebook here. So what we need to do actually is we can't just rerun this in here because uh, Python is actually stored in memory. So what we need to do actually is uh, rerun the query operation to so we'll do this. And then run graph the age. So let's take a quick look here and pay close attention to this, which is, uh, this is gonna change once I run it. See, it's actually uh, different looking. So here you can see example of connecting Jupyter to Salesforce within analysis using the uh, simple Salesforce library. Thank you for watching.